So today, today we'll uh, have the last session. We discuss uh, certain integration related topic. <clears throat> Some insight. So SAP TM has a, a good number of integrations with uh, other components, which are SAP components, uh, SAP applications, SAP systems, basically. And uh, in this process, uh, uh, it uh, so certain process, certain components are pretty much uh, natural. I mean, all of them are natural, but uh, certain processes are very important, like EWM integration, or even in the case of global trade, and also on compliance part, the product compliance, and are also from analytics perspective or something like that. So there could be uh, <clears throat> these functionalities which are integrated in the project uh, you would be engaged in, whether it is support or any kind of project it is, uh, it is possible that at least a few of these integrations might be there already existing. So from that standpoint, it's important to kind of <clears throat> understand, you know, what is the what are the functionalities and how are they placed? So from that standpoint, we'll look at uh, uh, some uh, integrations. So we have uh, a global trade system. We'll look at what's there in it, and then we we'll look at the um, product safety and stewardship uh, compliance, product compliance related functional area, and some external compliance. For processing that we will see and then we'll also look at another one which is uh, we'll see things from a different perspectives like analytics uh, ewf is very important and uh, there are certain other functionalities which are uh, talked about by sap in their major uh, presentations solutioning so on and so forth like transportation resource planning uh, at least I haven't seen a great use of it uh, used by companies, but uh, definitely that is one area. Yard logistics, uh, we have seen LBN and uh, GIS, we discussed some time earlier. So we'll briefly touch upon these uh, topics uh, so that uh, you can at some point uh, review them. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. Um, in your, in your project scenario. So uh, global trade services. So obviously, uh, so when we talk about global trade services, uh, typically uh, we talk about uh, import and export, right? Import and export management. Uh, that's the fundamental thing which comes to our mind. And obviously when we talk about import and export management, then we are talking about certain uh, business partners with whom we have to work with. So from that standpoint, uh, um, this uh, functionality of uh, GTS will deal with uh, parties like, you know, embargo checks or sanctioned parties. That means where can you, you know, with whom can you do your business, import or export business, uh, sanctioning of parties and so on and so forth. So they are certain things which will be maintained. And then this is from export and import management from the party's perspective. And then you have uh, custom procedures which need to be followed uh, when you have to export or import also. Like for example, if you have to, uh, just, you know, if you have to, uh, what do you call, export, uh, suppose if you have to export uh, raw materials across the border, and uh, man manufacture in, in some other country. Like this, in this example, is a North Atlantic free trade agreement. Uh, suppose, uh, so US may uh, send the raw materials across to Mexico. And in Mexico, you manufacture the final product. And then the final product get, uh, you know, shipped back to uh, US. So in that process, the duties are expected to be on the value added services um, on the on the products not on the uh, you know the raw materials which are being used 
and uh, ship it back. So, uh, so there could be custom procedures which will go to that level between uh, from export and import uh, perspective. That is also something which will be taken up in the GTS uh, functionality. Then the trade preference management, that is which are the countries with which you have preferential trade and uh, you know uh, whether it is import or export and uh, which are the countries where there are prohibitions and all that. So that is also managed in uh, the GTS. Yes, part. Then the filing part this is important, wherein you have to intimate the customs uh, well in time when you are, uh, uh, say, exporting the commodities, uh, so that uh, uh, things are the clearances and all that stuff uh, will have to be planned ahead of time. So the security checks and so on and so forth. So that also is makes a very important part and parcel of your uh, global trade service. So obviously in trans when you are transporting any commodity, don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. Which uh, is uh, relevant for global trade services, then these functions, GTS consultants would uh, have to uh, worry about these functionalities for that particular product. So obviously it doesn't fall within the purview of TM, but certainly from the GTS standpoint. So these are to be taken into consideration from a compliance standpoint. And of course, the nature of the goods, the whether it is uh, hazardous good or things like that, do you have any proper papers uh, associated with it? So on and so forth. So there are many functional areas which are to be support supportive uh, for the transportation of the commodity. So this uh, is an important, therefore it's an important functionality. So from the compliance standpoint, there are two SAP uh, functionalities or other products or applications which, um, which will support these uh, functional areas which we talked about. These, these are these functional areas. So it could be SAP GTS, uh, which will look into the risk and compliance related aspects. And of course, uh, it, it has uh, integration with uh, several other functional areas. On the other hand, from the product standpoint, uh, then you would have the uh, EHS or now we call it as product safety and stewardship functional area, uh, which will support the compliance part of it product compliance and GTS. So this part, dangerous goods and all that stuff comes under the product compliance, having its own functionalities and all that kind of stuff. So you will have different functional consultants into this domain, as well as in this particular domain. And uh, so from when you talk about GTS specifically, when we say GTS, so it caters to different functional areas, obviously export, import, then uh, trade preference, which we talked about here, right? Trade preference, and then custom procedures and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, I mean, the, the things which go into all these things could be like licenses, um, license holding of a particular uh, commodity to be transport, uh, exported or imported, and uh, some code applications which are essential, which should be maintained in the GTS uh, um, data, master data also. And uh, yeah, again, the sanctioned party details and uh, all this kind of stuff. Then <clears throat> interfaces with the, the local authorities or custom authorities. So you may have certain interfaces, um, uh, electronic, uh, you know, electronic interfaces with uh, customs. Like uh, we talked about this NAFTA, right? North Atlantic Free Trade Agreement. So what happens in NAFTA scenario is that uh, you could have uh, your ERP interface with customs. And uh, so uh, when you post it, uh, the data gets into the customs uh, application. And uh, when you're shipping back the finished goods, then the, you know, the posting will be referred and uh, uh, the necessary customs on the value added, which is paid, will be uh, verified. So those kind of things can happen uh, in a um, in a electronic form, so e-filing and all that. So yeah, so 
um, so stock in transit. Uh, okay, so custom procedures. If you have to follow a certain custom procedures, um, where could these custom procedures may? Be?